case of missing toddler Elena Steinfurth is receiving national attention. East Toledo toddler remains missing, but we are learning more about the alleged injuries. He just basically told me that uh, the baby had a bruised eye, uh, a little bit of dried blood around one of the nostrils, and a bump on the head. This video shows the room where Elena was reportedly last seen, torn apart by authorities looking for evidence. They've searched here, I think a total of four, four or five times. Angela Steinfurth sobbing in court. <laughs> Angela appeared on the front door reporting that her child had vanished. Just afraid by some chance that maybe she had gotten out the back door into the pool. I ran into the house um, directly into the bedroom where she said she was sleeping. Uh, I didn't see Elena anywhere. I never got a straight answer. She said her her statement was she did not know where the child was. Everybody in that house knows where that baby is at. When I first heard about the case of baby Elena, I immediately thought, somebody's lying. That was at first blush. And the only people talking at that time were police and the mommy. I don't think police are lying. I then immediately felt a horrible ache for baby Elena. Because the more I hear about the circumstances under which she was raised for her 18 short months. Were very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. And now she's gone. This video, obtained exclusively by WNWO, shows the room where Elena was reportedly last seen, torn apart by authorities looking for evidence. And according to the homeowner, it has remained untouched since the search. A big question in the case is a gap in time when the ex-boyfriend of Angela Steinfurth, Stephen King, is unaccounted for. Witnesses report that Stephen ran out the back door of this home immediately after Angela appeared on the front door reporting that her child had vanished. Julie says she was with Stephen that entire time and they were worried Elena may have wandered into the backyard. That's when he was said to have left for about 30 minutes. That is the missing time that many have questioned. But she says Stephen was with another neighborhood boy searching for Elena. Basically, we stopped talking about it, and, uh... Oh, wait, 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 the baby's missing, the whole town is upside down, and you stopped talking about it? Well, oh, you didn't I say, where the, is the baby? I was talking to the police officer who was okay. getting the video surveillance off my cameras at the time. Okay, all right. So, did she ever indicate to you, where's the baby? No. Did you ever ask her? multiple times she said she did not know and I said how, how can you not know there's too many people in that house okay the baby's laying down why didn't you check on the baby you know from I can understand once or twice you know you have a little faith in your spouse or your partner but if that baby had injuries why didn't you check on your child I never got a straight answer she said her her statement was she did not know where the child was uh, Angela came out of the home she told me that Elena was missing. I darted into the home um, and checked the bedroom where she was supposed to be. She said, the baby's gone, the baby's gone. And to me, she was showing no emotion. She wasn't crying, nothing. I wouldn't call it a scream. I'd say a little bit louder than normal, but it wasn't a scream or a yell. Um, I ran into the house, um, directly into the bedroom where she said she was sleeping at. Uh, I didn't see Elena anywhere. Um, I turned around, I seen that the back door was wide open. So I asked where a couple of the other people who were in the home, I'm not gonna say names, uh, asked where they were at. She had told me they had ran out the back door, the boyfriend and a friend of his. And at that point, I jumped in my vehicle. There you see the mom holding the baby. Take a look, this is just, she's kissing the baby. The baby appears well, well nourished. It looked clean. She's on her cell phone. She's holding the baby. Maybe this doesn't mean anything to you, but it means something to me. Look at her rocking the baby. She's loving on the baby. She's holding the baby. I don't know if all of you can see what I'm seeing. She's sitting alone on the front porch. She's holding the baby. And I am just telling you, I'm telling you that this is a mother. I don't care what anybody says. She loved this baby. 
Now, did she lose her temper and hurt the baby? I don't know. Did somebody else in that home of her boyfriend, did they hurt the baby? Is she covering for somebody? I don't know. But look at that. Look at her lovingly putting the baby in the carriage. This is important. This matters. This is just before baby Elena is abducted. The chances that baby Elena is alive are slim to none. The mother's story went from bad to worse. We learned a couple of days into our own investigation that the mother says that she woke up and looked over and baby Elena suddenly had a black eye, a bump on her head, and bleeding around her nostrils. The whole time that we were out here looking, uh, looking for Elena, she had, we were asking if she knew anything, anything at all, any ideas of where she could be and who hurt her and what happened, and she kept telling us, no, I don't know anything. I wish I did, I don't know anything. But really, this whole time, she knew. Um, pretty much that Elena was hurt and she was taken out of the boyfriend's house, but she don't know where she's at. Um, I heard that she was dropped, but um, to have a broken nose and a black eye, you're not just dropped. Um, I'm guessing that the way that it was bleeding, that there was, it's, I mean, for it to be bleeding as much as it was, she thought it was broken. There's no way that I would have waited. I would have opened my mouth the very first day, threatened or not. If this was my kid, oh, my mouth would have done been opened. She wants to come home. She misses everybody. I'd like for her to come home and the baby to come home too. I'd like to see the other people in that house in jail. You know, it's not fair for one person to be in jail and the other people out, you know, having a good old time about this. It's not just about my daughter, it's about everybody. Now, how do you wake up? It's like those movies where you wake up and there's a dead body beside you. That, that's in the movies. That's not real. So I find it very difficult to imagine, and I think I can be very creative, to imagine a scenario where a mother goes to sleep and her child is fine and she wakes up and the baby is lying there with a black eye, blood on its nose, and a bump on its head. Search for missing 18-month-old Elena Steinforth continues tonight. Now, the East Toledo toddler remains missing, but we are learning more about the alleged injuries that may have been what led to the arrest of the baby's mother. Now, the man providing us with the information is the same source that released this surveillance video of little Elena and her mother, Angela, just hours before the little girl was reported missing. Now, up until tonight, he's remained anonymous, but tonight, Frank is letting us use his first name to share with you what he told police about a conversation he had with Elena's mother, Angela, about Elena's condition before her disappearance, something he's going to share with a national audience on Nancy Grace's show tomorrow night. Uh, she told me that, uh, about the baby having a black eye, uh, a bump on the head, and just a little bit of dry blood around the nostril. Um, and I was like, well, what's all that about, you know? Um, and she said, well, when she woke up, the baby was like that. I said, well, what did you, why didn't you call, you know, or take her to the hospital or call the police or whatever? Um, she said that she told, well, she told me that she asked Stephen to check, the boyfriend to check on the baby to make sure the baby was okay medically. And the, ba and the boyfriend overlooked the child and said that she's going to be just fine. Now, it was after that conversation that Angela Steinforth would be arrested on a child endangerment charge, but during a press conference last week, Toledo police would not go as far as saying what happened to Elena or what type of injuries that she suffered, but said that her mother, Angela, did know that the baby suffered a serious physical injury on June the 2nd, but did not seek medical treatment for the child. She then says that she showed the baby to her boyfriend and said, do you think she's okay? And the boy said, yes, yeah, sure. What? Unless he is a pediatric ER doctor, 
Then wh why would she ask him? It's not even his baby. As Toledo police and the FBI continue following leads and Elena's mom remains in jail on a child endangering charge, folks in the baby girl's East Toledo neighborhood are growing more and more frustrated and desperate, hoping and praying that they'll find answers soon. Up and down Federal Street, yeah. pink ribbons are now wrapped around trees, poles and cars. A solemn reminder of East Toledo's missing baby girl, 18-month-old Elena Steinfurth. I have it on my windshield wiper, my antenna, it's on the vans, mirrors around the corner, it's everywhere. It actually came from the yellow ribbons from the support for the troops, support for Elena. Keep hope alive. She's still somewhere, she's not home yet. Bring her home. FBI divers packed up after a second day in a row of combing this portion of the Maumee River near the high-level bridge. We're told the crew, with the help of a U.S. Coast Guard boat outfitted with sonar technology, found nothing. For the past two days, this has been the spot on shore where crews set up shop. They had a tent here and their equipment, kind of as home base as they searched the river. But after clearing out today, it appears the search of this specific location has ended. Yellow crime scene tape has been removed and TPD officers no longer stand on guard. Carl Paget, who went to high school with Elena's dad, helped put together this donation jar, which he placed on the counter of the Facet Mini Mart at the corner of Facet and Oak. He says money collected will go toward food and water for volunteer searchers. Plus, if we bring her home, we want to throw a welcome home party for her and help her out getting her new clothes, new toys, stuff like that. Now we are hearing stories attributed to her, all of these stories attributed to her. I didn't hear her say any of this, but these are stories attributed to her that she felt threatened, that if she called police about the baby being missing or hurt, that she would be done in. And, you know, I think you can ask 80 out of 100 moms, they would take a bullet for their child. I would. But she was so afraid of taking the child to the doctor or calling 911 or contacting police I, I, I just don't believe it. I do not believe it. 25-year-old Angela Steinfurth breaks down in court on Thursday, her daughter missing for more than a week. Steinfurth is charged with felony child endangering of 18-month-old Elena. I need all the support that I can get to bring her home. Where is baby Elena? The toddler disappeared almost two weeks ago when her mother says she put Elena down for a nap. Her estranged husband says he came for a custody visit with his two daughters. At first, he says Angela refused to hand over Elena. When she did agree, Elena was gone. Family members say the mother's story just doesn't add up. She doesn't know where the baby's at or who took the baby. Personally, from what I have viewed of her, I don't think she's shown any emotion of it. Investigators believe the child may have been hurt. It was known to us that uh, the baby was injured at one point. She was aware of it and uh, did not seek medical attention for the baby. Volunteers have scoured the neighborhood. The streets are lined with posters with one goal, to bring baby Elena home. But so far, no clues. We do hope the child turns up alive. Right now, it's a mystery. We don't know what happened to this little girl. So the mother cannot be charged, for example, with murder because nobody, no case. Bond for Steinfurth has been set at $250,000. Search for missing 18-month-old Elena Steinfurth continues tonight. Angela came out of the home. She told me that Elena was missing. People are pointing fingers at me when they don't even know what's going on. She's guilty of not taking care of that baby like she should have. But the baby was injured at one point. While I'm waiting outside, I was talking to uh, Angela. She made it clear that, you know, the baby had a black eye, dry blood, and a bump on the head. Investigators combed through the wooded area along the river while dive crews searched the water. No signs of Elena. It was him and I looking in the pool and the garage. Something has to break. Somebody knows something, and somebody has to talk. I asked the captain of the police force, the Toledo PD, why they were looking at a body of water, the Maumee River, and I was told because it is so close to the home. It has, there have been divers in it, there have been FBI divers in it, local divers. It's been dredged, nothing, nothing. 
Where is baby Elena? To Captain Brad Weiss, uh, Toledo Police Department Captain. Captain, were you aware of everything Frank's just told us? Yes, everything came out during the initial investigation. We were aware, and that's why we continue to uh, have interviews uh, with Angela. Is she speaking to you from behind bars? Uh, we've had conversations, yes. Captain, how many people were in that home? Uh, besides the adults, there are, I think, it's, uh, two or three children, but uh, I think it's three or four adults were in there also at the time. Okay, so three or four adults, three or four children, so we're getting around six to eight people in the home. And, Captain, why did the mommy, Angela Steinforth, say she had to leave the home? Did, didn't she say she had to leave the home to go to the store, comes back, the baby's still napping, she doesn't open the door, and she only goes back there when the husband comes to get the baby for visitation. And, and miraculously, the baby is gone. Why did she leave to go to the store? What was it, the family dollar? Yeah, according to the, uh, what she says, uh, she went to the family dollar to make a purchase. Uh, anything else as part of the investigation? A purchase of what? Really what? Why did she have to leave the baby to go to the family dollar? What did she need so badly she had to leave her baby? Uh, that would be part of her statements to us, and I can't disclose that. Was it cigarettes? That's what our sources are saying, cigarettes? Again, I can't answer that in. I'm going to take that as a yes. Is that true? Three inmates, after she goes in general population, apparently starts yakking, three inmates go downtown for interviews? Uh, basically, uh, we're investigating uh, the case, and I'm not going to go into details on who we're talking to. Okay. Very wise, very wise. You know, uh, another question I want to ask you, Captain, if it doesn't compromise your investigation with me is the Toledo Police Captain, Captain Brad Wise. The baby clothes, is it true that baby Elena was last seen wearing orange shorts with flowers on them, but that those same shorts were found in the home? There's a discrepancy on what she was wearing. Uh, that was the initial, what they did state she was wearing. And... Uh, whether those clothing is still in the house or not, I can't confirm. Look, there she is with a little Easter basket this past Easter. The search for clues into Elena Steinfurth's disappearance continued below the high-level bridge Thursday. Investigators combed through the wooded area along the river, while dive crews searched the water. Meanwhile, in the East Toledo neighborhood where the toddler vanished, her family has a simple message. You know, I, I just wish that, you know, that somebody, whoever has her, would bring her home safely to us. Just where it return her. 18-month-old Elena disappeared Sunday afternoon after her father came to this Federal Street home to pick her up. Since then, flyers have been posted on trees and handed out. As days pass by, I asked Elena's grandmother how the family gets the strength to face another day. Just all standing together in prayer. Mouth, he's mouth and he'll go to jail. Hey, let's keep it down. You're being let's recorded. Down. Down. You say, yeah, Get him away from me. I got a restraining order. Again. I got a restraining order on him. One thing after the other with him. He's got, he's got, he had his mouth going when we first come in. The first time um, I said something to her, she just said, I don't know, Mary. She's like, I know she was hurt. She's like, I don't know where she's at. And that was pretty much it. And then the second time that I had asked her was when she told me that she didn't have to answer to anybody anymore. I just don't understand uh, that she, she's missing and she's been hurt. And um, it took her 11 days to tell us that she knew that she was hurt. But where is Elena? That's what we want to know is where is she at? Somebody has to know where she's at. Uh, there is no evidence that has been brought to us that your daughter has abused either child in the past. 
It's all hearsay. When I got over there, when DJ called me, everybody is standing around and sitting on the front steps all nonchalant like nothing happened. I ran up there and I was ready to kick in DJ or Steven's dad's butt. I wanted to know where they were at. Now that's, you know, you just don't sit around and talk. Get your butt up and start looking. Everybody was just sitting on the steps. That's a bunch of BS. That's, 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 that's just BS. That's the so first I'm time I heard about... that. But if they were in the house, if you read the newspaper, I think it was the next day, stating that the boyfriend's mother changed the diaper and gave her a bottle. Why ain't they in jail? What the hell is wrong with these people? You sit around on the porch and lollygag around. Get out and, and, and look for the baby. Don't be sitting around campfires talking all smack and stuff. Look for the daggone baby. Hundreds scoured an Ohio riverbank over the weekend looking for a missing toddler. They looked through streets and even garbage cans, searching for clues to find missing 18-month-old Elena Steinfurth. Angela Steinfurth. Her mother, Angela, is in jail, charged with child endangerment after her daughter disappeared. The search has been going on for two weeks. The baby was injured at one point. She was aware of it and uh, did not seek medical attention for the baby. I'm not going to say she was directly responsible for anything, but my daughter was in her care at the time that this happened, and the police are handling it the way they feel they need to. The way the baby's disappearance came to light is this. Her natural father, who was married to the mother, they're estranged now, why she's with her boyfriend, Terry Steinforth Jr., the bio dad, goes over to pick up Elena Steinfurth, his 18-year-old daughter. And he gets there, and the mom won't hand over the baby. Won't hand over, won't hand over. They go round and round and round and round about it. So Steinfurth Jr. leaves. He comes back with his own father, Steinfurth Sr., the, grand, the grandfather. They all get into it with the mother. They, they want the baby. So she goes into get the baby, and then comes out and says, the baby's gone. That doesn't even make any sense. They've searched here, I think a total of four, four or five times. He was gone for probably about a half an hour, I'd say. Stephen and I, both of us, went running out the back door, and I was just afraid by some chance that maybe she had gotten out the back door into the pool. I told Stephen to go down the alley to look to maybe she had gotten out the gate. He didn't go running out the back door by himself. He didn't go running out the back door with a baby. It was him and I looking in the pool and the garage. Uh, when I walked into the house and she showed me where the baby was supposed to be, I looked at her and I said, you had that baby sleeping in that pigsty? And I went out the door. <laughs> That's the way I that's the way I would have worded it, too. Uh, I walked in the front room. The front room didn't look bad. Uh, she, I asked where the baby was. She said it was in the front bedroom. I, I looked in the bedroom door. There were clothes stacked on the floor all the way around the bed. You had to step over clothes to get, well, you had to step on clothes to get to the bed. Uh, and I just looked at her and I said, you had the baby sleeping in there? I said, that's a pigsty. And that's when we went out front, and I what wanted did to she call say? the police for finding my baby. I understand from reports that just a few days later, the mom reported to work at Taco Bell as if nothing had happened. Right now, the mom is behind bars on child endangerment. The affidavit does not really set out specifics, but it tends to show that police believe, at the, at the least, she did not help her child when her child needed medical help. I also find it very interesting that in face of your child being missing, gone, that her father, Mr. Shiwi, had to basically pry information out of her. And she says repeatedly, I'm not going to talk. I'm not talking. I'm done talking. I'm through talking. Why? Why are you through talking? If you want to find your child, why are you through talking? What are you afraid of? A nervous wreck. I just want her home in one piece. I want to know that she's okay. It's, it's very hard not having her around. My other daughter's going insane without her sister. They, they need to be together.
If I had your support, I, w I wouldn't feel the way I do, but not when people are pointing fingers at me when they don't even know what's going on. I need all the support that I can get to bring her home. Anything to keep me comfortable and from losing my mind. I don't know how to explain them because there's, they're, they're crazy. I have been shaking for the last three days and I just want my baby home. She has problems and the only way they're going to get handled is if me and her father can do it for her. I spoke in depth with a friend of mommy's named Frank, and we're withholding his last name at his request. He showed me surveillance video taken from his front porch. His home, like many of our homes, has surveillance cameras all around it. And um, I saw mommy with the baby, cradling it, uh, holding baby Elena, kissing her, you know, making sure that she was appropriately buckled into her stroller. She seemed like any loving mother. What, if anything, triggered anger? I don't know. There was no black eye or goosebump or blood on the nostrils in that video. And that was just hours before baby Elena goes missing. Quiet. Let him out his mouth and he'll go to jail. Yeah. Now, what the hell is wrong with these people? Drama outside the courthouse. Hey, let's keep it down. You're being let's recorded. Keep it down. You say? Yeah, Get him away from me. I got a restraining order. Again. I got a restraining order on him. It's about the day gone baby. It's not about what this person said and what that person said. Mom Angela in court for a preliminary hearing. Already he's got, he had his mouth going when we first come in. You threw everyone together in a courtroom. The emotions are running very high. The whole time that we were out here looking for Lena, she had, we are asking if she knew anything, anything at all. She kept telling us, no, I don't know anything. But really, this whole time, she knew. Let's bring the baby home. Then after the baby's home, then you can start slandering people and talking. Angela Steinfurth has been moved from solitary to the general population at the county jail. What do I make of that? I think she's going to blab. I think she will either do it voluntarily or people will come up and ask her questions and she will give one story after the next. She's already changed her story, is my understanding. I saw a YouTube video of Steinfurth Jr. asking Angela to marry him. They seemed very much in love. I don't know what could have gone wrong in so few short months, but it did go horribly wrong. They're estranged. They both have new love interests, and the baby's missing. I know the family is devastated. While FBI dive teams are out searching the water, can you imagine your child missing and there are dive teams dredging uh, a, a nearby river, sending out canine dogs, including cadaver dogs, to look for your child? I, I, I don't think I could put one foot in front of the other. Now, psychics have been brought into the case, and we have been told that both of them have had visions of baby Elena crying in a field. Now, as to psychics, you know, the reason I have always shied away from psychics in relation, in connection to a case, is because it's inadmissible at trial. So whatever they may tell you, you can't use it at trial. So in, in my mind, as a trial lawyer, if I can't bring it into evidence, it doesn't matter. Uh, however, I will say that my mind is completely open, and I wouldn't rule anything out unless I could absolutely disprove it. And I cannot absolutely disprove psychics. So if I were the family, I would listen to them too. I absolutely would. I mean, I really think only a fool says no to any possibility of getting a lead in a case like this. So conventional wisdom be damned if you could bring home baby Elena with a psychic. Do it. I mean, we, we need to look at all avenues. If, um, if we're going to find anything, we have to be open to everything. Why do you have a cadaver dog? Well, I'm out there looking. If I have a cadaver dog, then it's a possibility that, uh, you know, we're thinking she's presumed dead. She's not out there at 18 months old living off the land on her own. 
Okay. So as you are following your intuition or whatever visions you may have, you have a trained canine, a certified, your certified canine handler with you. Tell me, did the cadaver dog hit anywhere? When you say hit, see that there's a fine line there. Um, it, indicating would be saying for sure, you know, that the dog has come across scent. Did what it show both, interest? Both dogs showed interest. Did you say both dogs? Both dogs. You have two. I thought you only had one. I actually have three. I have one that's trained in live air scent and two that are trained in cadaver. Okay. That this makes that even stronger. Now, as you all know, a cadaver dog's only going to hit on um, a, a, a dead human or dead human tissue. They could hit on blood. This is not Anybody mean. It's like a dead that. body. So, Gail, where was it that the dog showed interest? Well, I, all I can say is uh, I did have I did get permission um, to uh, do a perimeter search of the home and that was after the first dog Simon went up and down the alley which I had no clue where which house was which they wanted me to check the alley for different things that had been thrown out there um, no interest whatsoever even came across dead squirrel all this stuff just kept going he got where did it show interest that's my question wow it's really hard to, to disclose that information but it was in what, the why? rear of the yard it was where in the rear of the yard. In the rear of the yard. Back out where that uh, above ground pool is? Um, further. Towards the alley. Well, has someone asked you not to reveal it? Um, you know, it's a difficult situation because I walk the line between psychic, but I'm also on a task force team uh, working with police. So I... I Did somebody I'm ask you not to line. reveal the location, Miss St. John? Um, they haven't asked me not to okay. reveal it, but I doing it out of respect for Toledo police. Good to know. With me, Gail St. John, who took her canines out to the area. The canines did not hit, but they did show interest in an area in the backyard where baby Elena had been staying with mommy's boyfriend. We know that she is in jail. The mo mommy is in jail. She's talking to the family. We still can't find out what she's telling to the family, if anything. And we know that she's talking to police because they wanted to hold her through the weekend. They delayed letting her go until Monday. And, and we, but again, we don't know why the police are holding wait, her wait, through wait, the wait. weekend. I don't know that anybody delayed letting her. Are you referring to letting mommy go? They're not no, about to let her they, go. They, That's not what the delay they, was about. The delay was about right. putting up evidence to send her to felony court to be prosecuted for felony endangering a child. The the, that would be the, the technical terminology that you would be familiar with. But yes, they're not. They're they're hold. They want to delay it until Monday, and and, and, right. and but no one is saying why. This very rarely happens. At the end of this week. A preliminary hearing was scheduled where the state puts forth at least enough evidence for a judge to bind over or send the case, direct the case to the appropriate court. For instance, if it's a, uh, a shoplifting, the judge would hear the evidence and send that to misdemeanor court typically is the way it works. If uh, it has anything to, a, to do with a juvenile, the case is going to be sent to juvenile court. If it has to do with a felony, the case will then be bound over to a superior or felony trial court. That's what happens at a preliminary hearing. At the end of this week, baby Elena's case came up for preliminary hearing. The mother, Angela Steinfurth, was scheduled to be in court for a preliminary hearing. And then at the last moment, police on the case, on the investigation, asked for the case to be delayed till next week. Does that mean they are this close to finding baby Elena? Does it mean they are this close to getting a confession, this close to finding out the baby was sold or given away? Very rarely do you see police ask for a delay because what happens in a preliminary hearing is they basically explain why they made the arrest, what supported the arrest, why is it a felony, why should it go to superior court for trial?
Well, all that should be contained in the police report, but here, something is brewing. Something is brewing that we don't know about. Police wanted more. They wanted a few more days. They wanted one more weekend. 72 hours before they're back in court before a judge. What do they hope to find? What uh, do they hope to nail down? What piece of evidence are they looking for? We don't know. But we know they're looking for something over this weekend. What disturbs me most is that a little girl, a, a, a tiny little baby, has probably been abused and murdered. I pray to God that Elena comes home, and I plan to do everything within my power to help bring her back alive. But if she is dead, somebody's going down.